Welcome to Grace Abounds. I'm Pastor Jen Shaw, and in this podcast, I'm sharing my Sunday sermons from St. John's Lutheran Church, Palm Desert, California. I'm so grateful that you've joined us, and I trust that these words build you up in faith, hope, and love. There is a lovely story of a disciple who asked his rabbi, Teacher, why does Torah tell us to place these words, God's word, scripture, on our hearts? Why does it not tell us to place these words in our hearts? The rabbi answered, Because as we are, our hearts are closed, and we cannot place these holy words in our hearts. So we read them to place them on top of our hearts. And then one day, when our heart breaks open, the words fall in. The story of Martin Luther is the story of a man whose heart broke open and the word fell in. Luther grew up in the late 1400s in Eiselben, Germany, in the Roman Catholic Church of his time, which was the only Christian church in the West at that time. If you were not a Catholic, you were not considered a Christian. There were no other options. And the prevalent church teaching at the time asserted that we human beings had to do our very best in order to earn God's grace. Essentially, we had to make ourselves right with God through our good works, merit our salvation through our own words and actions. In other words, yes, Jesus is our Savior, but we have to do our part, otherwise known as works righteousness, attempting to justify ourselves by deeds prescribed by the law, by following the commandments, by keeping the rules, trying to work our way up to God. And this created an image of God as distant, uncaring, judgmental, an angry God, eager to strike down sinners, a God to be feared rather than trusted. And that's how Luther felt about God as a young man. Even as he entered a monastery, even as he became an ordained priest, even as he taught theology at Wittenberg University, he suffered from what he described as a terrified conscience. Luther was deeply aware of his own sinful nature. And so he was deeply aware that he could not work his way up to God, could not make himself morally right before God, could not earn God's grace, no matter how hard he tried. And he tried. The prevalent teaching in the church of Luther's time left Luther anxiously wondering, how could you know when you did your very best. And so how could you know that your sins are forgiven? And so how could you know that you're saved? If our salvation is dependent on us, it is uncertain at best. And so Luther would spend hours confessing to his friend and mentor, Johann von Staupitz, who, for his part, said Luther never confessed anything very interesting, and who tried to move his young friend from fixating on his own guilt and sin to embracing God's forgiveness and grace and unconditional love. That move finally happened for Luther when he was in his early 30s teaching at Wittenberg. Luther had what has become known as his tower experience. He was, as he puts it, pounding away 
on the words of the Apostle Paul in Romans 1, 16 through 17. And he focused on that phrase, the righteous live by faith. And he realized we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. It is a gift. Our salvation is not dependent on what we do. Our salvation is dependent on what God in Christ has already done for us. We do not earn God's grace. We already have God's grace. We don't work our way up to God. God in love always comes down to us. Martin Luther's heart broke open and the word fell in. Jesus Christ is God, our creator, who loves us so much that he came down to earth in the flesh, joined with us in our humanity, lived a life of grace and truth, showed us and taught us how to love, suffered and died on the cross, and on the third day rose again to life, taking our sin and suffering and death as his own and giving us his forgiveness, salvation, and life eternal. What Luther calls the joyous exchange. Christ is with us and for us forever. One day, he will make all things new. One day we will join him in glory. As the prophet Jeremiah declares, all people will know the Lord. In Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, Martin Luther knew we are saved, we are forgiven, we are loved. Luther experienced God who is present and invested and caring, a compassionate God eager to forgive sinners. God we can trust with our whole being. God who is, as the psalmist declares, our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. My freshman year at Westmont College in Santa Barbara was tough. I was socially awkward around my peers. I was emotionally unprepared for life on my own, even though I still lived only an hour away from home. And I was not ready for the questions that arise in an academic examination of theology. I hit the concept of predestination like a brick wall and became deeply worried about my own salvation. I didn't stop loving God, but I wondered about God's love for me. I know what it's like to experience a terrified conscience. And then, late one afternoon, Early in my sophomore year, as I was hiking through the beautiful mountains of Montecito, my heart broke open and God's word fell in. In a moment of pure grace, I just knew God loves me. God will take care of me. It will be okay. I felt then, as I feel now, the presence of the Spirit of God in Christ my Lord. Grace changed my life. Grace changed the life of Martin Luther. And he dedicated his life, fragile and imperfect as he was, saint and sinner, to declaring the gospel truth that Jesus Christ has set us free. Luther posted his 95 theses against the sale of indulgences on October 15th, 
on October 31st, 1517, which is an act that helped spark the reformation of the church and the world. And it's why we celebrate the reformation on this day. Luther courageously risked his life standing up against church authorities who demanded he recant his proclamation of the good news that we are saved by grace through faith in Christ. As Paul writes in Romans 3, Luther wrote the large and small catechisms to help Christians of all ages grow in their practice and understanding of faith. I still use the small catechism in confirmation classes today. Luther worked with his friend and colleague, Philip Melanchthon, to compose the Augsburg Confession, an articulation of the Lutheran expression of the Christian faith, which continues to serve as a foundational confession in the Lutheran Church. I studied ex it extensively in seminary. Luther translated the New Testament and eventually the rest of the Bible from Latin into German so that everyone could personally read and experience the gospel of Christ. As Luther once said, the Lion of Judah does not need to be defended. He just needs to be let loose. Luther met with Calvin and Zwingli and other reformers at the Marburg Colloquy, in which Luther insisted in their discussion of the Lord's Supper that while the bread and wine of communion remain bread and wine, they are truly Christ's body and blood. Christ is present in them because he promised he would be. This is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you. As Luther once said to Zwingli, God is as present in your cabbage soup as in the sacrament. The difference is, God is hidden in the soup and revealed in the sacrament. Luther wrote The Freedom of a Christian, an essay in which he affirms that Jesus Christ has set us free from sin and death and worries over our own salvation. And Christ has set us free for life and love and serving God and others. As Jesus himself says in our gospel reading from John, if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. Trusting in God, having faith in God's grace, we are freed to participate in God's healing work in this broken world. As Luther wrote, God does not need our good works nor our wealth, but our neighbor does. I first read The Freedom of a Christian at Fuller Seminary in a church history class in which we were tasked with writing an essay on the topic, what does Luther mean by freedom? Here's the final paragraph of that essay I wrote. Throughout his writings, Luther affirms that there is no freedom apart from Christ. Christ sets us free from sin and death through his death and resurrection. He makes us right with God by allowing us to claim his righteousness as our own through faith in him. He liberates us from selfish and sinful attempts to be good and makes us truly so. He frees us to truly love God and others. Though we are subject in the flesh to sinful desires and worldly authorities, we rest assured through faith in Christ that our spirits are free now and one day we will be free altogether. What Luther means by freedom 
is that when Christ sets you free, you are free indeed. How might you embrace your freedom in Christ? Let go of your fear and trust in God. Participate in God's healing work in this broken world. May our hearts break open to the word of God. May the Holy Spirit immerse us in grace. May we share with all the people in our lives the truly good news that Jesus Christ has set us free and we are free indeed. Amen. Thanks for listening. We're doing this every week, so make sure to subscribe. If you'd like more information about St. John's mission to know Christ and make Christ known, visit our website, stjohnslutheran.church. May God bless you on this day and in all the days ahead. Thank you.